As a technology developer and as a mathematician, um, I invent, I create, I look for ideas. And you know, this is industrial design. My son uh, is an industrial designer. He works in Manhattan right now, so I'm kind of familiar with the territory. So I'd like to share with you an idea base, a concept base, the sort of methodology I follow with the hope that you guys might pick something from it. And as a mathematician, I've always been analytical and logical. So when I approach something, whatever it is, a hardware store, a toy store, or history, I'm looking for concepts, and concepts that are independent of time. Because a concept, a core of a concept, is, can be independent of time. Because you know we have technologies today. We have limitations, social limitations, as people did in the past. But you can still find those concepts in the past. You just have to peel away their environment, their limitations, try and find the core concept is just as inspirational as anything else, as walking down the streets. Hope you guys look. Got to be aware, got to think. I mean, this is my opinion. This is how I approach it. So, my latest book, sort of never mind the weight. It's quite heavy, but my latest book um, follows concept development, 3D thinking through time. And it looks at everything, you know, like China, ancient China, Yellow River, uh, India, uh, Indus Valley, the Nile, all the way through to the present and possible future. And the sort of approach looks at concepts, looks at technologies, looks at knowledge of the time, because that's just as relevant as today. We're just as limited today, different way. So let's look at the past. Product brief. It's Stonehenge. It's in England. Big stones. What could the product brief have been? Could it have been, I need some sort of clock, seasonal calendar, machine. I need to know when to plant my crops, when the animals will come, when the winter will come. I need a clock. And I want a ceremonial center. You know, maybe that was the brief. Um, to build something like Stonehenge, it is aligned to solar events. The equinox, um, solstice, it's a good timekeeper. But before this was built, people would have had to have established a criteria for direction, north, south, east, west. They'd have had to start that way. And then some bright spark would have had to figure it. Someone had to notice that, say, the shortest shadow in every day points north. It does. So all you need is a stone and a shadow and just watch it. And there's your north. Then you get, you know, west, east, south. And then the Cherokee have seven points of direction. They have the four up, down, where they are. Seven. But anyway, so preceding this, would have been a range of concepts. And of course, erecting it, constructing it, there's always going to be someone who said, hey, you cannot move the, st the stones of that size. You can't put them up there. That's impossible. So you're going to get that whole mix, the same mix you, that you get today. Um, this is Chartres Cathedral in France, just south of Paris. It's a medieval cathedral. It's 12th century. The heart of it is this labyrinth. Anyone know of this? A labyrinth. Labyrinth is a, a complex path. Anyone heard of Theseus and Homer and the uh, Minotaur? Well, that, that, you know, supposedly a Minotaur was trapped in a labyrinth. Not as complex as this one, so again, you know, what was the product brief? You know, what did they want? Why would they put this in a Christian cathedral? This is way back. This is from Greece, ancient Greece. Why would they put it there? And what was its purpose? 
And to, to figure out its purpose, you have to, well, look at, you have to do your work, you have to research, uh, just the same old stuff. Uh, 12th century, there is a legend, a, a legend from Homer, ancient Greece, and he, he describes a labyrinth as the dancing ground of Ariadne. Ariadne was a princess, the daughter of King Minos in Crete. So a pathway, function, maybe uh, the monks would walk the labyrinth and uh, recite chants, maybe they'd pray, maybe it was something to contemplate, to think about. With a labyrinth, you move towards the center and away, towards it, away. You don't go straight to the center. It's a meandering path. So maybe it was something spiritual. Maybe the brief was, build me something that will help my monks go to heaven. I mean, hell, that's an amazing brief. I hope you don't get that one, but hey, it could happen. So um, I thought because the history, you know, time is dependent on technology. I thought it would be a quick, a quick review of technologies would be helpful and maybe you can give me an indication of what you know about and what you don't. This is three, the top left is 3D printing glass. Everyone on board with that? Obviously you've got to have a head, a printing head that's hot enough to fuse silicate. The one on the top right, that's concrete. Shotcrete, S-H-O-T, Crete. It's a quick setting concrete. Everyone familiar with that? Uh, possibilities? I mean, they're saying they built that house on the top right in 24 hours. I mean, this is very, very cool. Uh, lower left, well, the result of a laser scan of Michelangelo's David gives you the digital model, and here, this machine is carving into mar marble. Pretty cool. And the one on the right, well, that's very, very different. It's a, it's a microbe. It's, it's bacillus. It's a type of microbe that uh, excretes uh, something like a calcite. It's like a bonding agent, like concrete. But the microbe excretes it. Its food is sugar and urine. I'm sorry about that, but it is. Um, so the first concepts of application are to inject the food into a sand dune, release the microbe. It excretes, it bonds the sand particles, and you'll get a structure. It'll be kind of random. But there is a company that is making bricks using the microbe on the basis that you, it's, a, it's a cheaper production process. Anyone heard of that? Okay, so how about materials? Graphene, nanotubes, lattice structures. Um, when you guys design, are you mostly use SolidWorks or SolidWorks? When you design, you know, in your world, not only think of the external, you got to think of the material structure. So n inside the material. Because, of course, if you put a lattice inside, you're going to get, hopefully, strength, but much lighter. And this is revolutionary. I mean, bigger structures, longer, bigger spans, lighter weight.